Hey guys, it's Bella, and in this video we are going to be reading through and translating chapter 4, or rather leaf 4, of the Scythians. And as usual with these videos, if you want to have a go at translating each sentence yourself, you can pause the video before I start translating it and have a go. Leave your translation in the comments and I will. you can check with how you got on when I give my own translation. So, let's get on with it. I'm very excited to do this chapter because we start to see from this chapter the involvement of the Ostrogoths within broader intellectual movements. So, um, we might remember from the previous verse, or the previous uh, leaf, that John the ev Evangelist had been preaching about John the Baptist and he's quoting uh, John the Baptist now. So he says, So nu fachitz mina usfulnoda, yen skalwachsian it is minznan. Now what this means is, so uh, mina is that joy, and then mina is just mine. So my joy, nu, now, usfulnoda, which means um it was fulfilled, because the n suffix in verbs is a fientive. Jens skal wachsion, that man, he shall skal wachsion. If, now this if particle normally means meanwhile or at the same time, ik, and that's nominative, um, so it's I, and then mins nun, sort of, you know, I diminish basically or I decrease. Now that's an infinitive, so it's meanwhile I to decrease. So we need to borrow a one of the verbs from the previous clause, and that's going to be either usfulnoda um, or skal, and just based on context, it's going to be um, skal. So that man shall uh, grow, because uh, skal can mean both I or he, she or it, grow, shall. And then it's going to be that one, that man shall grow, meanwhile I shall diminish. So that's how that sentence works. Now let's get on, get on to some commentary about it. So, Ethan nu sipon yam sinem, them be sweekening, du judeum sokyandam yachquitandam sis, rabi, sai was mit thus hinderiodano, thami du witwadides. Se, sadopith, yach alle gangan du ima, noch unkunandans tho be nasion, inuch this lessith ins quitans, jens skal wachsian it is. Minznan. So, what does this mean? Uh, Ethan knew is um, wherefore now. So, you know, John the Baptist says this, and then um, this is explaining why he says that. Siponyam sinem, to his disciples. And this could mean a few other things, but it, in this case, by context, it means to his disciples. So, fem be sweeknin du judeum zokyandam. Now, in this case, even though you've got this comma in the middle, it does actually mean um, to the same disciples. So John says this, the previous line, Siponyam sinem to his disciples, them sokyandam. So it's to those men sokyandam. Now, sokyandam would mean to those men seeking, that's like a literal translation of sokyan, right? And we can see how it is related to the English word seeking, right? Or to seek. Um, but in this case, I think perhaps a better um, translation of this is debating or disputing or discussing in the sense of seeking a, a, an intellectual resolution through debate. And they are doing this du judeum to the Jews or like, you know, at the Jews. So this is the disciples of John the Baptist, they who are seeking a resolution from the Jews or to the Jews. Um, and they are seeking a resolution, be suiknin, um, because when be is followed by an accusative, it means about. So this means about or con concerning the purification. And this is the purification, the precise rituals uh, for purifying individuals, which, as we saw in verse or leaf three of the Skyrians, we saw that the commentary is talking about how in the Gospel of John it tells how there was a dispute among the Jews over this matter at this time, uh, especially in regards to the kinds of ablutions they had to do and what baptism did. So this is the sort of intellectual theological dispute that they're talking about here. 
so we also have, then we have the Quithandam Sis. Um, and Quithandam, like Sokyandam and Siponyam, is also um, dative plural. So this means, um, he says, to his disciples, sort of inquiring among the Jews according to um, the purification or about the purification, and to his disciples, Quithandam Sis, speaking to him or to each other. Now, yes, I know that was like, a lot to unpack from just this single sentence. It's very difficult, but that's the experience and that's why it's fun. So <laughs> Rabbi is just like speaking directly to John the Baptist, you know, it's the Hebrew teacher. Sai wa smith thus hindar yordano. So Sai is that man who was, he was, myth thus with you, hindar yordano, beyond the river Jordan. Fami fu wheat what he Now, Gothic is normally a pro drop language, which means it doesn't include the pronouns in sentences, and fu is the um second person singular nominative pronoun, which means you or thou. Um, and you can see the connection with the archaic English word thou. And the reason it's being included here is for emphasize, for emphasis, I should say. So the disciples are saying, You, John the Baptist, wheat what he days, you testified. Fami to that man who was with you behind the Jordan. Se is like, see, behold, look, sa dopith, that man is baptizing. Yach ale gangand du ima. And all of the men, ale, all the men, gangand, they are walking, they go, du ima, to him. So <laughs> this is quite funny. The Jews are basically saying to, to John the Baptist, um, you know, this guy Jesus is, is uh, he's stealing your customers almost. He's baptizing and they're all going over to him. Um, and that's why, um, according to the Skilins, he says this, because this next uh, clause is quite tricky. Um, so let's take the nominative first. We'll do the typical Latin uh, approach to translating a sentence, but you start with the nominative. Um, so quithans is... The man saying, and this is of course referring to John the Baptist, the man speaking, lesseth, he teaches. And now what we have here um, is we have two masculine accusative plural uh, na um, nouns, or this is a pronoun rather. So ins is them, and then unkunandans is the men not knowing, and it's the men who are not knowing for those things be nasiant about the saviour just as be swickening was about the purification so what this means is the man speaking that's being john the baptist he teaches them who were not knowing these things about the saviour in this and on account of this you know he says yen skal that man shall grow while i diminish so what they're saying is that John the Baptist was saying these things to them precisely because they didn't understand um, Jesus, you know, the significance of Jesus' coming and the fact that Jesus himself is baptizing. And what John the Baptist is saying here with the Enskal Waxian Ithith Minznan, if ik minznan, is that John the Baptist is saying that Jesus is taking over from him as the sort of the, the person who gives a spiritual baptism, which is more important. So that is how that works. I should do a sort of start to finish on that one. So from start to finish, that means, wherefore now, he, John the Baptist says to his disciples who were um, disputing with the Jews about the um, purification and speaking amongst themselves, John says to these disciples, Rabbi, um, that man who, uh, sorry, rather, rather, these disciples were saying, uh, Rabbi, that man who was with you behind, beyond the river Jordan, whom you bore testimony of, look, that man is baptizing and everyone is going to him. John uh, taught them not knowing those things about the Savior. And on account of this, he was saying, um, that man shall grow while I diminish. So rather complicated um, 
syntax in this particular sentence. But that's why the skeezings is fun. Okay, on to the next one. Athan so vi ina grexens, du litilama mela rechtis bruxwas, yach for the manmuyandi, sewalas these dopidane fralelot evangelions merine, et froyens lessons anastodiandi av judea, yach and allana million gardgathech, and huardia no thichandi un hitanu, yach okandi al mane du gudis kuntia tiohandi. So, what this means is, right, let's see, I mean, the first clause is very long. Um, so we'll first go up until Bruxwas. So, and we'll do the nom nominatives first. So, Athan just means however. However, so be ina garexens, um, which means that garexens is counsel, and then be ina about him, Bruxwas. It was useful. And it was useful do little la mamela mela for a little while because uh, male when it's singular can be a point in time and mela when it's plural means writings in Gothic. It's a very interesting word male, um, and then rechtis just means truly. So from Arthan to was this means however that counsel about him uh, was truly useful for a little while. Yach for the manuyandi sewalos. Uh, and it was, and the council for the Manuyandi is um, preparing, or like, yeah, preparing in advance. And we know that for the Manuyandi uh, goes with Karechsens, so it means the council um, which was preparing beforehand. So be Karechsens for the Manuyandi. We know this because fora manuyandi is the feminine nominative singular form of the present participle of the um, first declension week verb uh, uh, fora manuyan. Goodness, very forgive all of that academic um, grammatical gibberish, but that's what it means. So, what was the council preparing? Sewalos these dopidane, the souls of these baptized men. So these are the men, of course, whom John the Baptist himself was baptizing. Fralelot, which means it released. Evangelions um, merine. In the preaching of the Gospels. So this is sort of doing double meaning. So the was um, wiandi means it is preparing yes i don't know i know i'm um hang on yeah so that there's two different interpretations of that line so was for a man we sewalos can mean it was preparing those souls merine evangelions in the preaching of the gospel um and there's also this verb uh fralelot which me means you know he released and it can mean it released those souls and then we could also interpret meirine meaning to. So it released those souls towards the preaching, evangelions, of the gospel. Because if John the Baptist is saying that Jesus will grow as a, as a Baptist, as a preacher, while I shall diminish, it's, it's preparing those souls that John the Baptist has baptized, these dopidane, those men who have been baptized. It's preparing those souls to receive the gospel. And in a way, it's also in preaching of the gospel because John the Baptist himself is quoting scripture and he is um, sort of ironically part of the gospel message. So this first clause um, from Athan all the way to uh, Merine, it's rather complicated and they could have a couple of different interpretations. But I actually think that both of those interpretations would make theological sense and it might have even been intended by the gothic translator of the Skeedings because this first clause could either mean that the counsel the prophecy that John the Baptist was saying was useful for a bit because it was preparing um souls in uh the or with the preaching of the gospel or that it was preparing these souls and releasing those souls into the preaching of the gospel, as in telling them to depart from him and um, 
go to Jesus. So those are the two meanings. This could either mean that John the Baptist was preparing souls with the preaching of the gospel, or he was releasing the souls of the men he was baptizing into the teaching of the gospel. Um, and there's no real way of knowing, at least from my personal perspective, I can't see a reason why either one of those interpretations should be prioritized over the other. If you maybe know more about the history of Aryan Christianity and you have an idea of a particular interpretation which is more plausible in this scenario, do let me know in the comments and I would be very interested in hearing your guys' take on this. So, moving on to the next one, look at all of that meaning that we've packed into a single sentence of the Gothic. It's it's amazing. Um, it freuds lessons an astodian the of Judea yach and alana midion gargatech. So, um, like I said before, it means meanwhile, and then let's do the nominative first. Lessons anastodian the. Um, now anastodian the. Um, you may notice it's got the yandi ending, same as for a man yandi. Um, but in this case, it doesn't describe garechsens, this um, word anastodiandi, which means the one that is beginning. It actually goes with lessons because it's a new clause. That's what that marker helps us to identify. So, um, so meanwhile, lessons anastodiandi, the um, lessons is teaching, and it's the teaching which was beginning um, of the Lord, Freuens. Um so we could we could trans this translate this rather as the incipient um, teaching or the um, the nascent uh, teaching of the Lord. This is one of those things where a translation would imply that it's an adjective when it's actually a, a present participle. So that's why we need to look at the original Gothic. So um, it is big. It is beginning this teaching of the Lord of Judea from Judea, Yach and Alana Midiungar, and Unto the whole Midiungard. This is one of my favorite words in the Gothic language. Uh, Midiungard is, um, you know, it's similar as a uh, Middle Erde and um, Midion Midgard in um, Old Norse. It's um, Middle Earth, basically, is what we have. And this is basically the Gothic word for the world, the human world of, of humans, terrestrial humans. Now this verb is gathech, which means it prospered. So what this means from it all the way to gathech is meanwhile, so while um, this council was preparing the souls, um, the Lord's, the incipient teaching of the Lord um, prospered from Judea and Alana Midiungar unto all of Middle Earth. So what this is saying is that while John the Baptist was preparing these souls, Jesus's um, teaching was prospering, starting out in Judea, and it would then spread through the whole of Middle Earth. And huardiano, thichandi, und hitanu. So let's do the nominative first. So thichandi, you can probably see the andi ending means it's a sim it's a present participle, feminine nominative singular, just like. Um, Anastodiandi and Foramanwiandi, and this means prospering. So, and because there's actually no verb in the sentence, uh, we have an implied wisan. And because thichandi is also feminine nominative singular um, present participle, this means that it goes with the last singular nominative feminine noun in the. Uh, previous clause, which is lessons. So this means the teaching, thichandi, was prospering. And that's the implied wisan, the was. So the teaching of the Lord was prospering, thichandi, and huariano, um, basically, unto everyone, unto each man. Now, I think this actually means unto every land, and the word land is implied because huariano is... Um, Goodness, it is accusative neuter singular of the, um, I don't know what the determiner, um, huarius. And that therefore means that it could go with land because land would also be uh, neuter singular accusative. And so therefore I think that land is implied and also it would make a lot of sense, you know, in every land, thichandi, uh, prospering in every land, unhitanu. Up until now, even. Um, by the way, that 
hita form is actually relatively rare. We see it in himadaga, for instance, but it's actually quite uncommon in the Gothic language. So that's interesting that we see it in the accusative form. So, yah okandi, which means, um, and it was growing, it was increasing. And likewise, same thing here. Okandi is a feminine nominative um, pre singular present participle of the verb okan. So it goes with lessons. So the teaching was increasing. Al mane, um, the whole of men, all of the men, all of mankind, do go this kuntia towards God's knowledge or to knowledge of God, tiuhandi. And again, that's a feminine nominative um, singular present participle of the verb tiuhan, which means it goes with lessons. So the teaching was leading all of the men to knowledge of God. So we've got Gothic loves making use of these um, present participles, and we have um, one, two, three, four, five present participles, and they are all referring to the same thing. Actually, hang on, no, they're not all, sorry, referring to the same thing. These three, Anastodiandi, Thichandi, Okandi, and Tiohandi, sorry, those four are referring to the Lessings Froyans, they're referring to Jesus's teaching, whereas uh, the Fora Manwiandi is referring to the Garechsons, which is John the Baptist's prophesying. <sighs> so, <laughs> very complicated stuff. Um, and I, what I will do, I'll translate this now from start to finish, from Athan all the way to Tiuhandi. So what this means is, however, that counsel about him was truly useful for a little while, and it was preparing the souls of these men who had been baptized, um, and sorry, and preparing the souls of these men who had been baptized, it released them into the preaching of the gospel. Meanwhile, the Lord's teaching, starting from Judea, uh, prospered also into all of Middle Earth and prospering in every land up until the present day, growing also. It was leading the entirety of mankind, all of the men, towards knowledge of God. <sighs> That's, yeah. It's a very difficult sentence, that one. And this one is a nice, simple one. Inuchthis <laughs> means, and on account of this, wisandi again, is a feminine, nominative, singular, present participle of the verb wisan, which means the one being, this refers back to the lessons. And because there's no verb in the sentence, we insert an implied wisan, which means, well, it's already wisan, but um, you know, in terms of when we translate it into English, this means um, also being, yach wisan di skiris, um, clear or obvious, in this, on account of this. So what this is saying is that the preaching of the Lord was was very clear and easy to understand and almost we can see the proof that it was scarce easy to understand because it was bringing souls to God we can see it in this on account of this because it was able to prosper in all of these lands and bring all of these souls to God <laughs> well thankfully that sentence was short and <laughs> this one is also reasonably short <laughs> let's go so, what does this mean? Um, so, Kanida, is, um, he knew Mikildoth, the greatness or the magnitude, Froyens Wolfos, of the Lord's glory, Quithans, saying, so the man who knew the glory of the Lord was saying, that man coming, upatro is um, upwards, is above all of the men, or all the men, is just he is. So, what this is saying is that um, Jesus is Lord of all men, and it's John the Baptist who is saying this. Right, let's get on to Another one. This is going to be tricky. I have a feeling. 
ni fati ufra the wisand and swarve cani devi. Akiach swallow the is mickled with this macht in sok ya himena kundana ya hupatra kummanana quittans. It sick ertha kundana ya us ertha rodian dan in thisi wiste manna was. Ja the wichs ja the prophetus quit wisans ja garecht in witwodians agi us erthe was ja us worda he wister odians so what does this mean and if that you for the wisan dan swarde kanidevi means um now ni thati um if it is followed by a subjunctive verb it indicates purpose and intent. Remember the E when you have a subjunctive verb afterwards signals purpose. And the ni means not. So what this means is not so that. This means that um, John the Baptist wasn't saying this so that um, he might recognize. Um, Wisandan is um, the one who is being, so the, the, the man who is ufardo above, suare in vain. And what this is saying is, John didn't say that Jesus is above all men, and he didn't say, um, that man will grow while I diminish. The reason he was saying these things is not suare, it's not in vain. Ak yach swalo the is, mikild this macht in sok. Um, but also, um, that man being so great, swallow the, um, being so great, mikild thes macht insok. He, um, now insok, insakan is an interesting, uh, verb, and it basically means to seek or to prove by argumentation. Uh, macht mikild thes, the power of greatness, basically, of his magnitude, um, Ja himina kundana, ja jupatro kumanana quitans. And by the way, so this um, himina kundana and jupatro um, kumanana, um, these are different to the macht that John the Baptist is proving the existence of because macht is singular feminine uh, accusative it's a feminine noun and himina kundana and kumana are singular accusative masculine uh in this case these are um it's an adjective and a past participle respectively so what this means is that after the yach we have two different or before the yach and after the yach in this sentence we have two different things we have he both John the Baptist, such a great man, both um, demonstrated the power of his greatness, and he was saying quithans, himina kundana, yach upadar kumanana, and with those two we have an implied um, wisan as well to be, and that then makes it an accusative infinitive construction. So what this means is um, he was saying that, because the accusative infinitive construction means that, um, himena kundana, the, um, heaven kind of, the sort of heavenly man, kumanana, and the man who had, um, come, yupatro, um, upwards. So, and this is also quite interesting because from the perspective of John the Baptist, this hasn't yet happened. But obviously, from the perspective of the writer of the Scythians, um, Jesus has come above. So this might indicate some rather interesting insights into Ostrogothic theology that they viewed Jesus as always already having um, completed the passion, if that makes sense, because he has already, Kuomanana, he has already come upwards. So because Jesus has already come up to heaven at the time that John the Baptist is speaking, this means that they're recognizing, in a sense, the pre-existence, perhaps, arguably, of um, mankind's salvation. So it might indicate a particularly uh, Ostrogothic conception of time or a conception of time which the Ostrogoths perhaps borrowed from 
theatre of Heraclea's commentary, or at least they borrowed it within to the um, Aryan Ostrogothic church where this commentary was read and studied. So, <laughs> very complicated stuff. And we've got another if, which of course means a meanwhile. So, if sick erthakundana yahus erthe radianan. So, this is complicated, but it means um, they're, comp they're contrasting Jesus and John the Baptist here. And the grammar of the Gothic here is actually quite interesting as well, because they, they use it very uh, well to show the contrast between them. You might even be able to notice it, because in this um, gloss, they just happen to be right under each other. Um, so Jesus is described as himina kundana, heavenly kind or heavenly. And then... Sik is um, himself, it's reflective. So this is John the Baptist talking about himself. And how does he describe himself? He's quithans about himself. Um, he's saying himself to be erthakundana, um, earthly or earth kind. Um, so they're directly contrasting that Jesus is heaven kind, John the Baptist is earth kind, and drawing this distinction between the old law and the new law, the old law of the Old Testament, of course, of which John the Baptist was the Baptist, and Jesus of the new law in which he becomes, he baptizes everybody into a new faith. And um, of course, the old law dies and is on the earth and it stays behind while the new law ascends up to heaven, it lasts and is eternal. So there's this heaven and earth dualism at the heart of this um, bit of Ostrogothic literature that we can see playing out in the Gothic of the Scythians. And the Scythians is using the Gothic language um, and it's contrast of two different adjectives. So you have an adjective here and a, a participle here and when to describe Jesus. And then when John describes himself, we have an adjective here and a participle here. So it's a really fascinating and quite artistic use of the Gothic language to highlight the contrast between John the Baptist because you hear these two formulas used in the same way. You hear adjective and then you hear a um, participle to describe Jesus in one way and then you hear the exact same formula, an adjective and a participle used to describe John the Baptist, which highlights the um, equivocacy in a way and the similarity between the two, while also because of the semantic content of these words, highlighting the difference between the two because even though Jesus and John the Baptist are performing some similar roles, Jesus is, of course, the heavenly one, Himena Kunda, and John the Baptist is the Ertha Kundana, the, um, the terrestrial man. So it's a really, really fun um, little clause, this one. So anyway, <laughs> um, we, said, we said here that John the Baptist is saying himself to be Ertha Kundana, earthly, Yachus Erthe, and out of the earth, Rodiandan, speaking. So John the Baptist was speaking out of the earth, and this means that, you know, John the Baptist was speaking from the earth, whereas Jesus is speaking, you know, or rather has gone upwards, so he's speaking. So even though Jesus is speaking, you know, physically on the earth, he's also therefore speaking from above, from the clouds, or from the heavens, and because he is himself, himina kundana. In thesi, wiste, manawas, so, on account of which, wiste, um, in existence, mana was, um, he was a man in existence. Um, and this, I'm fairly sure, is referring to John the Baptist, because of what it says next. Yathe wich yathe prophetus wisans, um, yach garechtin witwodians. So, and also that probably should be garechtin, should be, um, should be blue because it should be dative because a uh, witwodian takes a dative as its object, and garechtin can be both a dative and accusative. So, what this means is John the Baptist was, um, Yathe wichs, yathe prophetos, means he was both holy and a prophet. Wisans is being. And it takes the verb from the previous uh, clause, which was was. So John the Baptist was being both holy and a prophet. 
Yach and Gerechtin Witwodians, and he was um, testifying Witwodians to righteousness, Gerechtin. Aki, however, was Erthewas. He was from the earth, as we saw above. Yach us wardache wiste Rodians. Now, this is a very interesting word and phrasing. And um, Rodians, you know, he was speaking. Us wardache wiste. Out of a verbal existence, us wardache wiste. Now, there is, there are some elements within Christianity, traditions in later centuries of Christianity, which emphasize silence as a form of heavenly existence, drawing on certain passages from the Bible, which I cannot off the top of my head remember. But this is why in medieval monasteries, starting with the rule of Benedict in the um, sixth century and going back later, sorry, and um, going down later into history, you have uh, monastic orders which held to silence either for the whole of the day or through certain parts of the day, like while they were eating. And um, the Cluniacs went so far that they had to develop sign language in order to communicate with each other and get basic tasks done. And the logic for it in those later medieval monastic communities was that silence was the condition or the state of heaven. They wouldn't use words to speak. They would just sort of communicate and, and, and be in oneness. So there would always be no need for communication. So the fact that uh, John the Baptist's wists his existence is described as wardache, um, which is sort of verbal, even though both him and Jesus are using words, right? Um, and in fact, John the Baptist himself even says that um, he, um, you know, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, um, and God was the word. Um, so I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out a way to put this, but it's almost like John the Baptist speaking was wardache wiste. John the Baptist can only speak with words. And when John the Baptist is speaking, it is only a terrestrial, an erthakund, um verbal preaching. Whereas because Jesus is already, he has already ascended upwards into heaven, the, the, the things that he says are not in this um, commentary according to the Scythians, they're not verbal communication because Jesus is already speaking from heaven where there is silence. There's silence in heaven from which Jesus is uh, speaking so uh, and preaching, I should say. So this means in this fascinating kind of theological sense that in a way we can read the Scythians as saying that Jesus isn't actually speaking, at least not in the same meaning as John the Baptist and, and the rest of us. John the Baptist and humans are speaking because we have to in order to communicate. Whereas Jesus, um, even though he's physically saying words, because the things he is saying is a holy gospel and a sort of message from heaven to which he has already ascended, um, because that is the message of heaven, it is therefore like reflective of the state of heaven and it doesn't qualify his speech because the heavenly state is one of silence. I, d I think this is a very long tangent and I don't think I've communicated it well or that it makes sense. It's just interesting theological considerations to bear in mind when you're reading the Scythians. And now I will go from start to finish and read the Nithati all the way to Rodans and tell you what it means. So I need to read for a second because I record all of these live, as you know, if any of you are watching this far. Um, so there's an implied, you know, from before, it's saying John the Baptist was saying these things. Ni thati, uh, sorry, not, sorry, not so that he would recognize the, the man who is being above in vain, but also such a great man argued uh, for the might of his greatness um, and 
saying that Jesus was heavenly and having come from above. However, John the Baptist was saying that he himself was earthly and speaking from the earth, on account of which, um, in existence or in essence, he was a man or a human. Although he was holy and although he was being a prophet and he was preaching the uh, counsel or the you know prophecy, nonetheless, he was from the earth, that's John the Baptist was from the earth, and he was speaking out of a verbal existence. <sighs> Complicated stuff. So much juicy theology packed into, look at that, packed into just a few words of Gothic. Um, amazing fun stuff. Anyway, onwards. It sa us himena kumana, jave in lika wisan thuchta, aki ufra alem ist, jach that iga sahui jach hosida, that a witwadith, jach tho witwadith is, ni ens hum nimith. So, Um, it sa us himna kumana. Um, meanwhile, that man kumana, you know, having come us himna out of heaven, yave in lika wisan thuchta. Although, uh, so yave normally means if, but in this case, um, well, actually, let's translate it as this if for now. If, even if in lika, in a body, wisan thuchta. He appeared to be. So even if Jesus appeared to be in a body, aki ufra alem est. Nonetheless, he is ufra alem above all men. Yach fatiga sahu. Um, and that which he saw, this is, I'm fairly sure it's John the Baptist. Yach uh, gahosida, fata gahosida. And he heard, fata witwadith. He um, testifies that about that. Yah for wit wodi that is ni ens hun nimith. Um and those things which he testified, ni ens hun nimith, nobody takes that that's literally what nimith means, but in this case we can see from analogy with um uh, educational literature in Latin and Greek, such as the Hermeneuma Tapseudositeana, that uh Verbs meaning to take, uh, like acipre or um, uh, jp in Latin, these can mean um, to receive or to understand in the intellectual sense, the, the sense of taking it into your mind. So this is a seemingly a bit of um, Greco-Roman phraseology that's been borrowed into Gothic. Um, so just as they would say in Latin, um, you know, illo acipio, I understand that as a way of saying I take it. Uh, sorry, they they would say, I take it as a way of saying, I understand it. The Goths are also borrowing this Roman phrasing into their language and saying, ni ens hun nimith for wit wadi that is. Nobody nimith understood, understands for wit wadi that. Those things preached is of him. So what this is saying is that um, John the Baptist is... Uh, bearing testimony about Jesus um, and saying that even though he is in a in a body, he is still above everyone. And John the Baptist is preaching what he heard and those things which, um, I believe this is John the Baptist, says nobody understood or nobody understands. So this is referring to the fact that the Jews in John the Baptist's time didn't understand what he was saying about Jesus being in a body, but also above other men. So, on to this next one. Yach foch yave us himena ana erte in mane garechs nesquam, aki nid the haldis erthins was, nich us erte rodians, ak himena kunda ana filchans fulsnya, thoi ga sah ga hosida at atin. So, complicated stuff. Let's go into it. So, yach thoch yave. Um, and even though was himina, out of heaven, on earth, 
in mane garechsnes. Now, um, this in theory could mean two different things because you have in and you have two different genitives coming afterwards, which could um, go with it. In this case, I think it means in garechsnes mane, which would mean on account of the prophecy mane of men. Quam means he came, and this is referring to Jesus who came. So although Jesus came from heaven onto the earth on account of the prophecy of men, Aki ni fe haldis erthims was. Nonetheless, ni fe haldis erthims was. In no way he was more so erthims was. He was, he was. In no way more earthly, uh, nor speaking or speaking from the earth. Now, what this means is that it is saying that although Jesus physically was speaking, like literally upon the earth, ana earth, he was not us earth. He was not speaking from the earth. Um, he was in it, but not of it, in a way. Um, and that this incarnation did not make Jesus terrestrial. And that's why, I think, personally, that I think that's why um, John the Baptist is still um, of a sort of verbal existence, because he is of the earth and he is earthly. And that's why, you know, we we could maybe see that the Ostrogoths had some of this same idea of silence being the heavenly state and uh, speech and language being an inherently human state. Because the, the text here has to specify that even though he is speaking and even though he's in a body, he is not earthly, erthins. Ak, himena kunda anafilchans. But anafilchans is... um entrusting or passing down him in our kunda, those heavenly things or the heavenly things my oh goodness fulsnya, um, is um in secrecy because this is of course referring to the fact that um john the baptist is speaking um in sort of riddles basically or rather um i think this is jesus actually who is speaking in sometimes in mysteries basically um those things which he saw, and thoi is accusative, neuter, plural, of the definite article sa, which means that it goes with himenakunda because himenakunda is also neuter, accusative, plural. So those heavenly things which he heard and he, sorry, he saw and he heard, at atin from the Father. So from start to finish, what this is, is, um, and even though Jesus came from heaven onto earth on account of the self, the prophecy of mankind, um, nonetheless, he was not uh, in any way more earthly, nor was he speaking from the earth, but entrusting the heavenly things in secrecy, which he had seen and heard from the Father. So this is saying that... Um, the things that Jesus so Jesus is not of an um, an earth sorry a verbal existence was wardahewiste because the things that he is saying are things that Jesus has um gasahuyakahoseda at atin. He has heard them from the Father in heaven, and that's also why Jesus is humans, or is that in yeah, uh, humana, he has already come um out of heaven and he has already come upwards into heaven. And that's where he heard those things. So that's why, because he is relating Thoi Gosahuyakahosida because he Jesus is relating those things which he saw and heard from the Father, they are therefore heavenly things, himinakunda, and therefore they're not verbal, even if Jesus is technically communicating them using human words. Because the semantic content of those messages is heavenly, it therefore qualifies as a kind of silence because the heavenly condition is a silent condition. I know that's a very weird um, bit of Gothic philosophy, but there you go. And speaking of Gothic philosophy, we're now getting on to some Ostrogothic engagement in very intense philosoph philosophical debates. So, 
Let's get on with it. Thor nu insakana wason from your honey, ni enthe stateni, i froind mikilin ka kanireiri, ak du gatarchian yakka sakkan, tho afguron hefts, savileus yak markeleus, thei enana anante deidun quitan attan yak sunu. So, let's go from Thor up until Fateni. Thor no inzakana weisun. Those things, no inzakana weisun, now they were um, proved by argumentation, inzakana. And that's referring to the heavenly things because Thor is a uh, neuter nominative plural and uh, himna kunda can be both nominative and accusative neuter plural. So those heavenly things were proved by arguments from Johanne by John, ni in this thatini, not only on account of this, um, i froins mikilin gakani reidi. And then i, like we said before, when the subjunctive verb comes afterwards, it normally indicates intent. So these things were not only told by John so that gakani reidi, he might cause to be recognised Mikilin Freund, the greatness of the Lord. Ak du gatarchian yachkasakan. But in order to um to mark, basically, and to to scold, to condemn by argumentation, for afhuron hefts, the um unholy rivalry or the unholy opposition, Sabileos Yach Markeleos of Sabellius and Marcellus. So these are two um, third century theologians who argued for, I believe the technical term is homoousianism, this idea that the father and the son are of a single essence, that God and Jesus are a single existence, a single being. Um, and this is why, by the way, I think there is an emphasis on this word wists in this leaf of the Skidins. They're talking about the different kinds of existence that um, Jesus and John the Baptist are in as a way of contrasting by analogy the different kinds of existences uh, that Jesus and God the Father are in. It's not that they're saying that it's exactly analogous, that John the Baptist is in terms of existence to Jesus, what Jesus is to God, although to some extent it is because John out and Jesus, John is the more earthly one, and from Jesus and the Father, Jesus is the more earthly one, because remember, this is a commentary from the Arian Ostrogothic Church, which believed that Jesus Christ was inferior in terms of essence and holiness to God the Father, who is superior, even though Jesus himself was very holy. So in a way, it is drawing this comparison between Jesus and John the Baptist, but not it's not basically saying because of that analogy that Jesus himself is earthly. It's not saying that. It's just saying that um, this uh, idea that was put forward by Sabaleus and uh, Marcellus that, and they say this idea here, um, they say that the father and the son are one man. So that's why they are emphasizing that there are two different kinds of existence in this passage. They're talking about the existence of John, which is um, terrestrial and verbal, and they're talking about the existence of Jesus, which is heavenly. And he's hearing, reporting the things that he sort of perceived and heard from God uh, in heaven. And so what they're saying here is that um, these things were proved by John, not only so that he could show the Lord's greatness, but also so that he could mark and condemn that unholy um, like opposition of Sableus and Marcellus. Um, those men who, they dared to say that the Father and the Son, because this is an accusative infinitive construction, enana, one are one thing. So they dared to call the father and the son a single man, is what this is saying. And this sort of, by the way, links into what I was saying before about the significance of them saying in this passage, this passage, that uh, Jesus himself was a kumanana here, 
the significance of saying that Jesus has already ascended into heaven from the perspective of John the Baptist speaking in the gospel, indicating that Jesus has this kind of timelessness. This is also indicating that the word of God, these heavenly things, have a degree of timelessness because it is saying that these things were proved by John for the purpose of contradicting the argument, the hefts of Sabuleus and Marcellus, who, you know, they won't live for another 200 years or something, or even more, these two theologians. So it's showing this kind of preminence, this so this foreknowledge of the future controversies of the Christian church. And the Scythians is claiming that the Bible itself is aware of these, and Jesus and John the Baptist are aware of these things, and they are structuring their preaching in a way deliberately to contradict the Catholic arguments of these men and to support the Arian interpretation of the Bible, which of course is what the Ostrogoths were adhering to. So, from start to, from start to finish, from Thor to Sunu, this means, now those things were demonstrated by John, not only on account of this, so that he might uh, recognise the greatness of the Lord, but in order to mark and to condemn the unholy argument of Sabuleus and Marcellus, those who dared to say that the Father and the Son were one man. So, really dramatic um, theological stuff. And then it just cuts off here in Antar Sawicha. Meanwhile, that other holy m man, perhaps, or that other priest, and then it just, um, it trails off. And this might have been about to talk about a different, um, perhaps an Aryan priest who the writer of the Skeedon quite likes. And that's the end of that leaf, so we'll never know what came next. But god damn, that was some exciting stuff that we got to. We really delved into Ostrogothic um, philosophy and the Ostrogothic worldview here. It was amazing. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you've enjoyed the um, the Skidians series thus far. You know, if you want to learn Gothic or any of the other languages that we do on my channel, you can subscribe to my Patreon, which will be linked in the description of this video. You can also join my Discord server, where we sometimes do language lessons and I share resources. I share most of my tidbits before they become videos on there. So you can join and join a community of like-minded people. We're quite fun and friendly. You should come and join us. And like, comment, subscribe. You know the whole deal. And I will see you guys in the next video. See you later.